What's up, everybody? Welcome back <laughs> to the High Quality Podcast, Episode 6. We're back, we're here, and we're doing it. And, uh, and this week is a very special week because we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Turtle 3, with us. Hello, Turtle. Thank you. Hello. How do you, yes. how do you like to be, if someone says your name out loud, do you prefer Turtle or Turtle 3? Uh, I don't really mind, but I guess I'm used to, like, turtle, which is what most people say. Right. Yeah. Can you, can you tell me, I mean, I'm sure I've heard this somewhere before, but I, like, I can't think of it on the top of my head. Why, why turtle three? And why would the D? Like, what's, what's the whole origin of your username? Wait, well, what, what do you mean the D? Like, like, oh, okay, right, as in instead of, like, turtle. Three. Instead of turtle, you're right, it's turtle. Right, Yeah. Yeah, I don't really think how I put much thought into it. I think I was like eleven or twelve or something. I was just like, my previous name sucks, and it was actually like, actually, like, it was just like before I actually made my YouTube channel. So it wasn't like because I was gonna make mashups or anything. I was just kind of <laughs> like, I wanted to have like more of an image, I guess, mm. instead of having like, I don't know, some random generic username. That's, I mean, it, it's basically ended up being that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I just thought I was more special than I was at the time. <laughs> right. But I think, I mean, I think, like, um, like there, there's a line between generic username and simple username. Like, your, your username, yeah. it's, it's simple, but I wouldn't really call it generic, you know? Like, yeah, that's fair enough. It's yeah. like, it, it's, very, it's very to the point. Like, there's only one Turtle 3 on the internet, you know? I, I don't know about that. I've... <laughs> <laughs> My Twitter account has two threes because there was like someone in like 2009 <laughs> doing CrossFit and made like 10 <laughs> tweets. <laughs> do, they, do they still have that handle? Uh, they do and they haven't posted since 2009, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like Twitter yeah. should do something about those. Like I feel like there's so many people who can't have like the handles that they want because people made accounts like 10 years ago and then haven't posted i thought like they said they were doing something about it but like i haven't actually seen anything like about that since i don't know yeah Very... Maybe i also just imagined it i don't know <laughs> 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 well uh jack dorsey if you're listening to the podcast there's a a tip for you go and uh get rid of those old inactive twitter accounts but uh yeah so i, I mean honestly I, I feel like i've said this every single week um, but I really, like, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I think you and Toon Link are, are the two people so far that have been on that, like, I, I knew your guys' names, like, way before I was even on Discord. Um, right. and so to obviously, like, come onto Discord and, like, meet you and then obviously, like, get to be friends with you and now, like, we're doing this interview thing is just, like, it, it, three year ago, me would have been like over the moon about this. It's a, uh, it's a really cool opportunity. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I don't know how like representative that is of like all the people watching because I haven't been active like with Siva for a long time. Right. I feel like some people might be watching, going like, "Who is this?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I was I was luckily like right. When when I got into the channel, I was like right in that golden window of like I think I discovered it October 2016. So all the stuff that yeah. I was like getting uh like watching up on was like stuff being made by the you know the OG members. So uh, so you were definitely mm -hmm. a big name that I recognized and uh, and looked up to a lot. And then obviously I I came to look up to a lot more because of the you know particular rip. But we'll get there. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so let's let's start off, uh, you know, the way I, I always like to start off, which is, uh, you know, the topic du jour, which is video games. Um, I, I want to say, like, if if I were like eight years old, and my parents asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would say Turtle Three because. Your ability to play games is something that I will just forever be envious of. Like, 
I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you just like you play all these games and like somehow you're just completely bomb at every single one that you play, and it's just like remarkable to me. So, so please tell me, uh, you know, how did you start gaming? How did you become such a such a good gamer? Uh, well, I'd say I think I've just like played a lot of video games, like. Mm-hmm. A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> so I don't really remember like when I started. Actually, like pretty much my earliest memories go back to like my uncle bringing us like a mod chipped PS One and like a Dreamcast. Okay. Yeah. So that was an interesting way to grow up because, like, I think I talked about this like with um some other like some other friends as well about how. Like I'm obviously like not in a third world country, right? I'm I literally living in Eng- uh, I literally live in England. Sure. But like, like people growing up in third world countries, like because piracy is less of a concern, or rather because like piracy is a more legitimate way of actually like consuming that kind of media, you end up like having more to choose from, end up consuming more media because there's like a lot of childhood stories, right, where people got into gaming because, like, I don't know, their, their dad just, like, bought whatever game they found at, like, the game store. Right, and right. They had to sell with that. Or, like, <laughs> a lot of stories from the 80s where it's, like, you know, back in my day, we had to, like, rent a game and then <laughs> that for, like, a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like my experience is very much not that because, like, pretty much from as early as I can remember, my uncle was like, okay, here's a Dreamcast. Here's like a hundred ripped discs <laughs> of random games. <laughs> Here's a mod chip PS1 that could just do whatever. So like, as a kid, I never really saw that, which is cool. Wow. And it also means that the first time I played Super Mario Bros. the NES was on a Dreamcast. <laughs> 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 because yeah, there's like emulators and stuff for that too. Right. Wow. It's, it's a weird experience, yeah. That's like every kid's dream. Just like, you know, your your first experience with video games is you just get like not unlimited but like more video yeah, games you than you could hope go to go right into it yeah yeah so did you did you have any in particular that you like gravitated towards that you remember yeah so um the first video game i actually remember like beating and actually like sticking with because you, you can imagine also when you have that many games you also just kind of like pick one up play for five minutes go eh, and then Put it down. And pick it all up instead. That's what I do now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when you have all these Steam games, when you like know what emulators are, you just right. Yeah. So um, then the first game that I actually didn't do that with was probably Sonic Adventure One. Oh really? I mean, no, yeah. no I'm not. I'm not trying. <laughs> Sorry, my. Yeah, I never. I never said I had like good taste or anything. Like that. <laughs> My my distaste for Sonic games just showed through a little bit, but uh, alright, yeah, I, I guess it yeah, makes sense. I, I completely understand that, but at the <laughs> same time, like I can't deny how much of an impact Adventure One and Adventure Two had on me as a kid. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so Adventure One in particular was like the first game I actually remember beating, mm-hmm. and Adventure Two, uh, I ended up playing that more on my GameCube actually, and I actually like, had a copy of it and everything, mm-hmm. and I was pretty obsessed with that game as like a lot of. How old was I even, like, seven, seven year or seven year olds are, eight year olds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, like, although I started with, like, Dreamcast and PS1, like, I ended up begging my dad for a GameCube after I saw, like, Melee and Mario Party 4 being played at my uncle's house. Mm. And it was, like, the sickest year ever, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I also had a PS2 as well. Didn't really have any Xbox growing up. Yeah. Have you ever had yeah. Xbox? Uh, I had a 360, and then it red ringed, and then I oh. no longer had a 360. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. you're. I, I wouldn't even say that like you missed out on too much. Like, as someone who had a 360 and still has a 360, like, I mean, I used it for sure, but in hindsight, like most of the stuff I used it for, I could have just gotten on PC. You know, um, that was pretty much me with PS3 as well. So right, like, there's just a lot of cross-platform stuff and. Yeah, like if I if I talked about like what PS3 games I played the most, like GTA 4 is probably up there. Mm-hmm. Skyrim is probably up there. Of course. Yeah, and like either of those games, I wouldn't really play on a PS3 anymore if I wanted to. Right. So yeah. Um. Yeah, with 360, I feel like the main thing I missed out on was Halo, and like obviously yeah. Master Chief Collection exists now. So. 
Of course, right. Have you have you yeah. bought it yet on PC? Uh, not yet. No, I've been meaning to. You should. not I mean, I, I yeah, like. I, I should. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a Halo fan because I had a 360 and like it came with it and like if I mean if you had an Xbox yeah. you had Halo. Um, exactly. Yeah. But uh, but it's fun, you know. As as someone who's not like a huge first person shooter guy, I I get behind Halo from time to time. Hmm. I feel like the main thing is, although I'm saying like I have like I can get Halo now whenever I want, I feel like. A lot of people like hype up like the magic behind like mid two thousands Xbox Live and like <laughs> Halo Three and all that stuff back then. So yeah, I totally feel like I missed out on that. But yeah, yeah, it it it, it happens. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I, that's kind of how I feel about Sonic Adventure. Like everybody, mm, yeah, everybody talks about like how they have like such fond memories of playing Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure Two when they were kids and. Yeah. It got to the point where, like, I saw it so much that I think, uh, I think three summers ago, I I bought both of them on Steam, and oh, no. I played I played through the first one, thought it was junk, and then I tried to play <laughs> through the second one, and I like couldn't even finish it. I was like, who, how, how do people like these games? I I I still don't really get it, but I think it's, I I would I would venture to say that that people who think Halo is good now. Versus when they were kids are like probably a little more credible. Like I, if someone tells me right out of my face <laughs> that they like Sonic Adventure still, I'm like, all right, I just I dock you a couple gamer cred points. That's just that's just how I roll. Right, okay. I could I could get into like why I liked Sonic. Right, so obviously there's the music, right? Okay, that I, can't, I, I can't will really give it talk that. To you about that. I can't. Yeah, you can't talk. I can't. But like right. I also I also can't talk to you about like Halo music. Like <laughs> that shit's good too. But like I, I don't know. In. It, it's like for, for first person shooter standards, like Halo actually has music, so Fair. It, o- automatically. Like, <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but yeah, anyway, like there's the music. There's see, as a kid, I feel like you can just ignore a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that you don't like, if, as long as you that there's something you like. Right. So with Sonic Adventure too, like you've got the Sonic and Shadow levels, got the Emerald collecting levels, and then you've got like the Mecha levels. Mm-hmm. Right. Anybody who actually says they enjoy the emerald collecting levels or like the mecha levels has Stockholm syndrome or is lying. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the Sonic and Shadow levels, those are actually still fun, like even when I play it today. Like the controls are a bit like like it's dated. Mm-hmm. But like it's the actual game. Like it actually feels like three D Sonic. The emerald collecting stuff is like you can kind of see what they were trying, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I got the idea. It was just like I, I think I actually, I, I put the game down on an emerald collecting level because I was like, I just, yeah. I can't, I can't do this to myself anymore. There, it's... there are particular ones where it's like, why would you make people play this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's that. There's the, uh, and then the mecha level was just like slow and boring. There's not really much to say about them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like Sonic Adventure Two. Sonic Adventure One. It has, like, a similar problem where it's, like, it's got a bunch of different ways to play it, but it's, like, nobody actually enjoyed playing, like, Big the Cat like, any <laughs> of his stuff. <laughs> right? Right, of course. Um, and, and Tails levels were, like, okay, what if you could fly? And it's, like, why would you, like, why would you let the player do that? Kind of dark. <laughs> like, you just fly over everything. <laughs> so, like, in hindsight, yeah, those games aren't. Like, okay, I'm, I might, like, hesitate to say they aren't good, because at the time, like, they looked very nice, they sounded very nice, like, okay, maybe, maybe this is, like, more style over substance. Right. Right. Uh, I was gonna, you're, you're kind of, uh, yeah. you're coming up on my, on my Mario 64 is not good argument of, like, <laughs> <laughs> of, like, for its time, I totally respect it, but, like, what I play. Well, I don't think people clicked on this video expecting, like... <laughs> A three-hour-long video essay about how. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we've already talked about Sonic more than I ever would have thought or wanted to on this podcast. Yeah. Total, so uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm it's... very sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I baited it out a little bit, but uh, I mean, yeah. it's like if any opportunity that I get to dunk on Sonic a little bit while also hearing from someone who defends it a little bit, I'll always take it because you know. Even though I, even though I personally don't love those games or even like the whole series, I I always like hearing why people like particular things. So yeah, um, yeah, that's a, like when you say defend a bit, like 
I don't know, if you asked me if Sonic Adventure 2 was a good game, I would probably have to, like, sit there thinking for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, be like, well, <laughs> for its time. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, like, they're, they're, I'm definitely not, like, as hardcore of a defender as, like, other Sonic fans. Like, actually, I wouldn't even call myself a Sonic fan, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we covered that, at least. Yeah. You don't, we don't want people getting the wrong up. idea. Exactly, yeah. This guy like, is I just say I enjoyed fan. those games a lot as a kid, but... Right. Yeah. And so, uh, what kind of stuff do you gravitate towards nowadays? Um, a lot of weeby stuff, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Like, I tried to play a bit of everything, but it's, like, I feel like my favorite game now, like, I don't know, like, there's a few visual novels, there's, like, some JRPGs. Like, JRPGs and visual novels probably make up, like, most of my favorite games now, so. Gotcha. I can't really not call myself a weeb. <laughs> <laughs> is there yeah, a... I try to play, like, a bit of everything. Is there a particular reason for that? I mean, I feel like, uh, I mean, especially visual novels are, like, more story-driven, so are you just gravitating more yeah. towards, like, stuff with a good narrative? Um, I don't know if I can say this, because there's also, like, a lot of my favorite games where there isn't much narrative, or, mm -hmm. like, the narrative is completely optional, or, like, it, it just, I don't know, I just like a game when it's good. Like, <laughs> I feel like I can't really explain this that well, because I can be like, oh yeah, this game had a really good story, but... Right. Like, okay, I like Near like, Nier 1, for example, like, the original, a lot, and the story in that game is, I, I love it, I love the music, I love, like setting like pretty much everything except the actual gameplay <laughs> <laughs> so like that's still one of my favorite games despite right. like it probably playing worse than sonic adventure 2 but like <laughs> <laughs> wow that is quite the statement <laughs> <laughs> but like um but like say i don't know like i played uh baba is you pretty recently oh yeah that game's yeah, and amazing. that's also one of my favorite games now yeah i really love it but it's like, mm -hmm. what's the story in Baba is You? Well, <laughs> you're Baba. Sometimes, not all the time. Actually, probably not even half the time. Right. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. That's Baba is You. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, go play Baba is You if you haven't yet. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And if, well, I mean, I, disclaimer, like, if you like puzzle games at all, if you don't like puzzle games, don't play Baba is You. But yeah, that's very fair. <laughs> it is a puzzle game, yeah. and it doesn't hide that at all. <laughs> like I, I love puzzle games, but like even that, like that one really, I, I like. I couldn't stick with it for too long because it just got like so. I was like, my brain. I feel like my brain doesn't work the right way to play this game. It just kind of like leaves you there, mm -hmm. like for sometimes like hours at a time, and it doesn't really like stretch a hand out or anything it's just like yeah just like do the level man right <laughs> which is like that which i re which i respect time. a lot like I, yeah. I feel like a lot of puzzle games are are pretty quick to like give you like a hint system or like something if you like are clearly not progressing because i feel like yeah in general they want you to like play through the game but baba just is just like totally go fuck yourself if you don't understand how to <laughs> solve these puzzles <laughs> So, it's uh, weird because like I also played The Witness, right? Oh, and that game is also very much like, yeah, go fuck yourself. But yeah, like, it, it's <laughs> to an extreme degree, yeah, yeah. But it's like I vibe with Baba a lot more than The Witness because I think it's just like the games themselves. Like I just clicked with how Baba handles things compared to how The Witness handles things. Mm -hmm. It's like in Baba, there's like clear rules. The player is presented with them. There's like one or two instances where like things might happen in a way you might not really expect them to. Other than that, like, the game is... It doesn't really hide much from you. With The Witness, like, I feel like, like, a lot of the puzzles... Okay, I don't really want to, like, go into it, because I don't want to spoil, like, the playing experience right. for anyone who hasn't played it. Yes. But a lot of the puzzles, like, first you have to figure out what the actual puzzle is. <laughs> <laughs> right. <you> get... <laughs> Which is very much not how Baba Is You operates. Like, Baba Is You has a world map, you pick a puzzle, and then the puzzle is presented to you, and you're like, okay, i got to solve this. Mm -hmm. The witness just drops you in the middle of nowhere and goes, <laughs> okay, beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I feel, I feel like it just depends on, like, I, I'd say what you prefer, but, like, it's not, like, m me liking Baba more than the witness isn't really, like, 
I can't really give an explanation for it. It just is. I just like it more. But like, right? Yeah. And I've, I mean, I, I totally get that because like I'm actually the exact opposite way around. The Witness is yeah. is one of my favorite games ever made. Um, yeah. And like <laughs> I will, I will recommend that game to high hell. Even though I acknowledge that it's like it's not for everyone. Just in in a similar way that like Baba is You is not for everyone. Um, yeah. Very much. But. Uh, yeah, man, puzzle games. I can't get enough of them. Like every every once in a while, I feel like every I don't want to say like every year, maybe every couple of years, like a, a puzzle game comes around that's just like extremely unique and cool, and it always just mm. makes me so happy. It's it's just it's like just, there's just really like no, nothing like playing that particular game. It's just like oh, you yeah. like this? Cool. Like you're never seeing this ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which I do respect. In, you know, in a market where like a lot of genres are like completely oversaturated. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like I'm pretty hard pressed to find like a 2D platformer that I really want to play right now, um, hmm. except for Mario Maker because I play that nonstop. But that's a different thing. That's like, it's yeah, like, and even Mario Maker is like you're not really gonna get that anywhere else either. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Unless you like, I don't know, download like SMBZ or like whatever the fan project on PC is. Right. 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 <laughs> Which is like a similar concept, but yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. Well, I think uh, I, every episode, like, I always just end up wanting to talk about video games the whole time, and then the episodes, mm, like, yeah. are longer than uh, than an hour, but also, like, I don't care about making them an hour at this point. Um, yeah, that's fair. But anyway, uh, let's, let's transition over to uh, <clears throat> the world of music. Um, and so, mm-hmm. I, obviously, I know that you, you have quite the... the music mashup career but before we get there i'm curious if you have any like other musical background before then like with instruments or anything like that yeah so um i did music in school up to okay. like up to like i guess you'd say high school like actually up to when i was 16 and after that i had to drop music for reasons mm-hmm. uh, which yeah i'm not happy about but that's that yeah, uh, that <laughs> there's um yeah so i think when i was like 12 or something i started playing guitar oh wow okay yeah so there's that as well um i got pretty decent at it although like over time i just kind of stopped for no particular reason really (laughs) and then that that just kind of sat there like i wouldn't also say i'm terrible at it if i picked it up now but like Mm -hmm. yeah that's also that Uh, (laughs) um other than those two things like I I don't really have like that much experience with just like say like pure like music theory or like learning about just how to make music or, or any of that kind of thing. Like I feel like a lot of people in Siva probably have like more education than that than me. Sure. Uh yeah, so like you mentioned like my mashup career, like I basically just went, Okay, I'm just I like this video on YouTube that is Space Jam mashed up yeah. with another song i think i'll make <laughs> that too and yeah here i am <laughs> like yeah i didn't really think of like uh my music passion or like right i don't know like, i i am also pretty passionate for music i'd say but like i'm definitely not a theory head or like i don't know like i don't have like a master's degree in music or whatever <laughs> i'm just i'm just there right <laughs> So yeah. it's it's definitely much more of a of like a, a hobby thing than like a, yeah. something you're like uh, what's the word I'm looking for like I don't want to say skilled at but I guess skilled at's like the right term. Um, academically inclined right right <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. what uh, what kind of music do you listen to uh these days um I feel like whatever is a cop out answer <laughs> 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 uh like over time. I guess I could say, like, when I was a kid, I listened a lot to the Beatles. Okay. And then, like, after that, I got, like, very into, like, Metallica, Megadeth, and, like, other thrash metal bands. Interesting. And then after that, I got very into hip-hop. Okay, right. I I knew that part. Yeah. Yeah, and now I'm just, like, I just find whatever on the internet, I'm just like, yeah, this is cool, I like this. Like, there's a lot of, like, music communities and sites and stuff like that that just talk about, like, any music release, really. Yeah. Hey, just, yeah, I basically just pop on, like, whatever seems good, whatever people seem to like. Uh, Recently, I've been obsessed with this, like, Japanese band called Fishmans. Probably, like, 
seen me and like um Toon Link talk about it sometimes in like Bi- servers and stuff like that. Fishmans? Yeah. yeah, fishmans, yeah. Okay. Not fish men, like fish mans. Fish mans. Th- All one word, yeah. I feel like I feel like um Oh, it sounds it sounds familiar to me. Um uh, yeah, like it probably sounds familiar because like I've mentioned it and like or like yeah. mentioned it in like servers. Yeah. But yeah, like they're definitely not like a known band. Right. Like among people who like in those music communities and sites I said, so like createyourmusic.com for example, they mm-hmm. like that band a lot. Mm-hmm. Um I used to Right, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna admit this now. Uh, I used to browse 4chan a lot when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> uh but most of that was on the music board. And you know, it's not a very pleasant place. But they did talk about music. So <laughs> I feel like that was where like a lot of the like, oh yeah, I'll listen to whatever attitude com- came from. Because mm-hmm. like there's like there used to be a regular thread on there, like the share thread. Okay. Where people would really just like plug whatever the hell like music they found and like it didn't really have to be anything popular anything obscure it was really just like yeah i like this music it's cool i'm gonna plug it so you have like <laughs> one post that was like some 70s ukrainian band no one's ever heard of. <laughs> and then the next post would be like i don't know like a carly ray jepson album or something <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um yeah those communities are pretty wild uh yeah i don't really go on 4chan anymore I was almost going to say, unfortunately, I don't know why I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I mean, I, I've never uh, used 4chan. I think I, like, went on it once because yeah. my friend told me about it, and it just, like, I was confused, so I left. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. But uh, There's, like, a barrier, and it's not really worth overcoming that barrier. <laughs> <laughs> and whether that's, like, I don't know, the UI or just the people, or, like, it, it's right. a website. It is definitely a website. <laughs> that's all i can that's it, all i can say about it it is a website yeah it is a website <laughs> awesome um yeah so so i, w- I want to precursor this i i think i might have even told you this before um and it doesn't mm. it doesn't apply like l- in in the largest part to you but it does apply to you a, a bit um back right. back when i was in high school i want to say it was either like my second or third year of high school it must have been my second year of high school um i came across this playlist on youtube called um songs to slam to and it was just like a hundred different space jam mashups of like video game tracks and i i thought it was like the funniest shit i used to like play it over the speakers for my friends and like I would put them on like while doing homework and shit. Like I just I was so into the Space Jam mashups, um, mm. and I like I I I got over that phase uh, probably by like my last year of high school, um, and right. then all this time later, you know, I, I'm getting into Siva Gunner. Uh, I think I might have even already been like on the team by the time I discovered it, but like two years ago or so, I like found that playlist again because I had it saved on my YouTube playlist, and I look at it. And, like, half the stuff on there is from, like, you, Zvari, and Tainik. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, that is that is so mind-blowing to me that, like, I was jamming out to your guys' mashups years before I even knew who you were or, like, came to know you. Um, so, yeah, I'm I don't know. I'm to say that, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, it's a, it's a – <laughs> I wouldn't say it's, like, a small world situation, but it's just a, it's a funny coincidence yeah. to me. Um, it is, yeah. So, so tell me all about like how you got into you know making the slam jams and and the mashup scene in general. Hmm, so right, okay. Um, in 2013, uh, I was just randomly on YouTube, I guess, and I found like people here are probably familiar with, like Botanic Sage, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. If you're not, so what, found... what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I, i'm just like throwing it out because i feel like he hasn't been as relevant lately so yeah I mean, that's a good point yeah yeah it's fair but yeah like i found one of his like old well at the time it wasn't old but like a space jam mashup of like space jam and also Tona 3 okay so it was the so it was mass destruction like the normal battle theme mm-hmm. and yeah like i was like oh okay this is cool um i think literally like 
I, I think that matchup was also the reason I then went on to actually like play the Persona game. <laughs> I'm a big fan of those as well. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So I, I came across that mashup. I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, looking back on it, it's like it's just it's just a Space Jam mashup. But like, I guess <laughs> I guess it's like edited around so like the vocals of Space Jam don't play at the same time as the vocals of Mass Destruction. Okay. Which is like probably more effort than a lot of Space Jam like, mashups <laughs> did at the time. So I was like, okay, this is cool. Like they actually fit. Like, because I feel like the first time anyone stumbles on a mashup and like they haven't really like gotten into them before, they're kind of blown away. They're like, wow, these two songs work together. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like with Space Jam, it's like, well, like there, there isn't much in terms of like melody or harmony. So <laughs> it, it works together with a, like a lot of songs. Right. But at the time, we're just like, wow, Space Jam is like this random song from a 90s movie that people don't really care about. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, wow, this is amazing. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go and like listen to all this other stuff. And I did that and I was like, oh, okay, I kind of want to make my own. So, I don't know how I also like did this. Like, I started making Space Chance by using Ableton Live. I don't actually know or remember how I came across Ableton Live. I just googled like best mashup yeah. thing <laughs> and saw someone on Reddit say like Ableton. I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, like yeah, because a lot of the rippers in Sivagon, for example, they use FL Studio. Right. And like I have experience with FL Studio. I've made stuff in it, but I've mm -hmm. always like leaned towards Ableton. Really? Just because that's what I'm used to. Yeah. Interesting. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, so, like, obviously in, like, um, the music-making world, Ableton is, like, one of the most popular, oh, yeah. like, DAWs, whatever you want to call them, like, music, yeah, like, music-making software there is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, whereas with, like, Steve so Gunner Rippers, like, everybody uses FL Studio, like, literally everybody, <laughs> and it's, like, whenever people are talking, like, in terms of, like, help, or, like, troubleshooting i guess it's always like fl studio screenshots and like people telling you to use this plugin in fl studio and just dial it to these settings or whatever so yeah. there's, there's that yeah um i wonder why yeah, that so, is like i don't i always just assume that like that's what everybody used and then sort of as i've gotten like to know more people i've learned that like not not everybody uses fl studio like people use like logic yeah. and ableton and i'm like why why is fl so, studio like the one that everyone goes to i don't know but I think it's, um, so FL Studio, like, the way it handles MIDI in particular. Yeah, that's, that was my guess. It's very intuitive. Right. It's very, it's also very deep. Like, there isn't really anything you can't do. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this is true for other doors as well, but, like, with Ableton's MIDI and FL's MIDI, it's clear where the focus is put in terms of, like, how they make those um, doors, like, uh, the pieces of software. Like, right. FL focuses a lot on the MIDI part and not so much on, like, the sample part. Yeah. When you're working with samples in FL, it's like if you work in samples in say like Ableton or Reaper or even like Vegas Pro, mm -hmm. like working with samples in Vegas Pro, obviously like everybody uses like Vegas Pro for YTPMVs and that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but whereas in FL Studio, it's like you can obviously do that in FL as well, and obviously people have, but it. I don't want to call it not as easy. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like Ableton has this like really deep, like uh, way of sampling stuff. There's like a lot of ways to, like you can like warp the clip. You can, uh, set it to these different like sampling modes and like play with the settings there to like give it a different sound. It's mm -hmm. like it's deeper than some of the stuff I saw in FL. But at the same right. time, like none of it really matters that much in the long run. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like yeah, because I started off making mashups. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, ma making mashups in Ableton is like not that hard. Like the way it handles like BPM and things like that is it's it's pretty intuitive. Okay. So yeah, and also like a lot of my rips, like I'm not really, like I'm not really the kind of ripper that, um, like I I work with a lot of sample based stuff a lot of the time. Right. Yeah. So I think Ableton was just more comfortable to me in that sense. Gotcha. Uh yeah. So in 2013, I downloaded Ableton. Uh, I went, I'm just going to make Space Jam mashups. Uh, you're going to groan when I say this. The first Space Jam mashup I made was also Sonic Adventure 1. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. 
Uh, it was. It doesn't matter. Uh, Sonic's theme. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, I made that. I made a few more. Uh, I was like, wow, these are like pretty like quick to make, and they also sound good. Right. So yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Like, <laughs> I didn't really have to put that much effort into like learning music and learning Ableton and all that kind of thing. I could just like put two songs in, match up the BPM, and be like, way <laughs> banger, <laughs> banger alert. <laughs> Dude, you you are preaching to the absolute choir with that one. That's like that's my that's my whole trajectory with the chip mashup stuff. It's like it's it's euphoric because it makes you feel like you're creating something when in reality you're just like stretching something and you're just like holy shit, look what I did! I'm so sick. Hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was very much how I was at the start of all of that. Right. And uh, so that was 2013. Uh, you also brought up like Zavari and Tainik. Yeah. Did you so did Which, you know them like before the Siva stuff? So like Tainik or like another one of their friends, I think, like started commenting on like some of my videos like a few months into like me making my channel and uploading them. Okay. Like I used to post on um so there's a subreddit called Come On and Slam. <laughs> <laughs> Which has what you what you would expect it to have. Sure. <laughs> and um yeah, I just post like all my mashups on there and they were pretty well received and people were like yeah, this is cool. So I'd get like some subscribers, some people, nice. and that stuff. Yeah, so I think like Tainik or yeah, like one of their friends stumbled on a few of my videos, and they're like, "Oh, this is really cool. Like, I like this." Blah blah blah. And yeah, that was basically that. Like, I didn't really speak to them ever again for like <laughs> <laughs> the next, I think, like year or so. Like, it was it was quite some time before um, Zavari went like, "Oh, I'm gonna make a Space Jam like album." Like a collab album. Oh, like okay. A bunch of people on it, and yeah, like they like he reached out to me, and I joined like a Skype chat full of like all these cool people I look <laughs> up to, like Botanic <laughs> Sage and Triple Q. And, oh like, wow. Yeah, yeah, like Triple Q. Like back then, he made a deal out of like not liking Space Jam mashups, <laughs> but like he had one himself, and he got invited because of it. It was like a Sonic Adventure two one, mm -hmm. of course, of course. Uh yeah, <laughs> and like yeah, he was there because of that. Like that was his contribution to the album. Uh, Botanic Sage, as I said before, a lot of like old names mm -hmm. that people have probably forgotten by now. Like Pitlight, um, like T R Kong, I think was there. Like a lot of like Space Jam mashup people. Wow. Yeah, I don't even. So, yeah, those, like, I don't know those names. So. Yeah, fair. Like <laughs> we were just in a Skype chat, uh, just shooting the shit. Mm -hmm. Like, not really talking about Space Jam mashups or any of that. Like, the album got kind of pushed aside for a while. We just kind of, like, talked about video games in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's like a old, it's like a 2014 Discord chat. Exactly, yeah. Only in Skype, which is, like, infinitely worse. Way, than... way, way worse, yeah. Way worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was a really cool experience. Yeah. Um, it was also, like, how I got to, like, speak to Botanic Sage, who was my idol at that time. Mm hmm Which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, also, before that, I'd actually um, made a Kill the Kill mashup, and I submitted it to like a Triple Q album and made it on there, and I was like, oh, cool. Like That was like earlier in 2014. Mm -hmm. like, I I thought that was really cool as well, because obviously I looked up the Triple Q as well then. <sighs> I'm, I'm using past tense here, but like, I don't want to say like I'm not cool with these people anymore. It's just like, <laughs> I was getting into that stuff. Right. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my god, like these, these are amazing. Like, I, I have to like... like shoddily imitate these people and what they do right it's it's weird yeah. it's weird to hear you like talking in like uh, about these people <laughs> this way because like to me you've been one of those people like the whole time you know so right, like yeah. it's it's weird to like hear you describing yourself in a place that like is similar to where i was when i was like getting into all this stuff as well like it, it i don't yeah. know i mean it, it makes sense for sure um, but it's also cool that like a lot of this stuff happened before like Discord was even around before Siva was around. Um, yeah. So you you definitely like you've been in this sort of scene for a while. Uh, I'd say like I kind of like I have like like talked to people like mm -hmm. in the scene, but like so back then, for example, everybody was on like SoundCloud, right? And yeah, like SoundClowns, as it were, like uh, right. <laughs> they were pretty popular. They were the thing, like. I was, I think there was like a group of people that were probably like, uh, like I guess talking to each other over that, like they'd formed a community over it, and I wouldn't really say I was in that because like I had a SoundCloud, but I didn't really use it. Mm -hmm. So like me coming into Siva and that kind of thing, 
like literally like in 2016 uh this was like february uh Tainik just randomly messaged me one day on steam like hey do you want to be in like a chat full of like mashup making people <laughs> and i was like yeah sure sounds, sounds cool so yeah like here i am <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like it was literally just like out of the blue like like, I had him added on Steam, but we also didn't really talk that much. Like, right. we weren't, like, best friends or anything. Like, we, we were friends. Like, we talked, like, yeah. before. Yeah. But, yeah, like, <laughs> the chat I got invited to, uh, probably mentioned on this podcast before, Gangnam Goons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I didn't, like, get invited because of Steve or anything like that. It was literally just, like, oh, you want to talk to other mashup people? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And then I get in, and then, like, I see all these names I don't recognize. Like, a few I do. I'm like, oh, MTH or that person who like made that Splatoon mashup on Triple Q's channel. I really liked that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, like just stuff like small stuff like that, where it's like names just got stuck in my mind. Yeah. Other than that, like I didn't really know anyone like apart from Zavari and Tainik. Right. Yeah. So I got in there. Uh, I saw this guy called Chase the Chat, and he was talking <laughs> about his channel. Who? <laughs> 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 <Ooh. laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, what channel? Uh, so like the day I got in, <laughs> this was like end of February. Um, like Giva Sunner had started blowing up, right? And by started blowing up, I mean like when I got in, people were posting like subscriber counts, and they were like, mm-hmm. "Giva's gonna hit a thousand subscribers." Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> well, I I knew you. I knew you were in there early. I did not know. I didn't know you were in there that early. Holy shit! And they were like, yeah, so like, um, they, they asked the new guy, which was me, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> to subscribe to the channel. And I was like, what? Well, like, I thought the Evil Sun uploaded video game music before he had like 200,000 subscribers. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I click, and um, I don't remember what was the first rip that like I listened to. Mm-hmm. But I, I know I listened to the Pokemon Ruby, like the first rip ever. Of course. Know? Like, right. Yeah, at, at that point. And I was like, my mind was blown. <laughs> like, obviously everyone's mind is blown when they, like, <laughs> see that kind of thing is possible. Yeah. And you can, like, just pretend to be video game music, but it's actually just not. <laughs> but it still sounds like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, this is, the, like, the best idea ever. I was, like, fully behind it. Like, I think I was a thousand subscriber as well. Really? Yeah, something like that. Wow. Like, it, was, it was on 999. I was either 999th or the 1000th. Like, I was in there at that point. Damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah. This was, like, end of February, start of March. Right. And then, uh, yeah, after that, like, I was like, oh, cool. I kind of want to submit to the channel as well. And I'm, like, asking, like, oh, there, is there, like, an official, like, way to submit stuff? And then I think, like, someone was like, yeah, just DM Chase. <laughs> Which is, like, <laughs> <laughs> like if, if you know, like, like the vaguest hints of, like, what happens behind Siva. It's it's very different these days. Yeah, it's certainly like an actual system. <laughs> there's like people that actually evaluate the things you're submitting. Mm-hmm. There's people that actually give you feedback on it. Back then, it was just like, yeah. So I have this MP3 file, <laughs> this rip I made. <laughs> yeah, I just put it up on the channel. <laughs> wow. So that that explains a lot behind like why 2016 rips aren't the best. Right. Right. There's some there's some super iconic stuff in there, but absolutely, yeah, a lot of it hasn't aged too well. Right, but I think but like still like a charm to it. Exactly, I think like yeah, objectively, I think if you like compare it to the stuff that the channel puts out today, yeah, it hasn't aged very well. But like, yeah. there was also a certain magic to like how just like how how frequently those rips were coming out because like that was like still the time where the channel was at this at the size of like people still thought that it might be just like one person and like. So like even though like it wasn't yeah. all like top notch stuff, it was just cool that like there was this constant pipeline of stuff coming out. Um, man, that must have been yeah, like definitely. so cool to be a part of. It was, it definitely was. Like a lot of people say, twenty sixteen is like a terrible year. Right. <laughs> uh, for me, I feel like that year was carried quite a bit by Siva Gunner, and it's like basically what I remember twenty sixteen for. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, so like you said, there were just constant rips. Um, like also the mysterious image of the channel, right? Because like now, like I wouldn't say we're completely open about it, and like it still has like the like the image of oh these just like random like video game music, right? Totally aren't 
<laughs> in any way. <laughs> I, I still love like, it. I still love it when uh, I would say like once every two or three months, someone comes in the fan server and they're like, "How does how does Siva Gunner make his rips?" And I just it it gets me every time, dude. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Yeah, so like back in 2016, like the jokes about like Siva, when are you going to bed? Like all that stuff right. is a lot more common as you'd expect. Right. Uh, yeah, so the channel had that image to it. And it mm-hmm. only really, like the first step towards making that go away was when the first album came out and yeah. people were actually credited. Right. And you could actually see like the names of the people who, who were behind like a lot of the stuff that people liked on the channel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so very early on, it was just like, Steve Gunn is totally just, oh, I guess Giva Sun or Steve Gunn or whatever. Like, oh, he's just totally just one guy just like uploading 50 videos or like 20 videos a day. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and yeah, it was very, it was very cool. It was very unique at the time as well. I couldn't really think of any other channel like this. Right. Like, these days, like, it's still very much like its own genre, I guess. Like, you have TTGD, you mm-hmm. have other fan channels. Right. Although I guess TCG is the one people mainly remember. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it. It was very unique. It was, I'd say, creative. It was. Yeah. Yeah, like at the time when I first found out about it, I was like, "This is the coolest idea ever." Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like back then, I got into that. I started making a lot of rips. Um. Did like like I think part of the reason behind why I made a lot of rips in say 2016. Like I guess if you check my contributions on the wiki, for example, I have like sixty or or like quite a few reps in twenty sixteen, mm-hmm. and after twenty sixteen it drops off. Like <laughs> I feel like that thing about um like twenty sixteen quality not being the best. Like I probably contributed to that because <laughs> like a lot of my rips were like shit posts or like uh stuff I just like threw together and went yeah I'm, I'm gonna submit this right and you know some of those are like. Some of those are actually iconic, right, in terms of, like, big rips in terms yeah. of the channel. Yes, absolutely. I remember, I remember back then, like, the Katamari on the Rocks, the Katamari Damacy rip, mm-hmm. the Zalables one. Of course. That was, like, like still, like, I don't know how people view it today, but back then, that was, like, the rip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, yeah, so, my, like, I had a Pokemon Color team one, the Cypher Admin one. Yep. Yeah. And like, yeah, when I submit that back then, people like treated it similarly, and they're like, "Whoa, this is like, like it had that kind of like, I don't know, like a lot of people like uh, in Gangnam Goons were like, oh yeah, this is really good. It had a lot of comments. It started getting a lot of views. Uh, these days, like, also hasn't aged that well. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a bunch of stuff thrown together. Right. But, like yeah, like I'd say back then, like for if anybody remembers 2016, like Siva, there's probably a chance like. At least one of those like rips were probably me. <laughs> but like, if anybody like joined the channel later on and they haven't really listened to the old rips that much, there's probably like one rip that people still really like from me, like in yeah. 2017, I guess, which is the one that foreshadowed earlier. Right, right, and and yeah, and we'll get there. I do want to say um, yeah. about the about the cipher battle one, um, yeah, and, and just like stuff like that in general. Like, I think that. Like you said, and I, I like I said five minutes ago, like yeah, by today's standards, it probably hasn't aged all that well. But like, yeah, com- in the in the day in 2016, like those kinds oh, of that like, was the shit. It was that the was... shit. Yeah, <laughs> like like the like stuff like the Katamari rip and and the Cipher battle rip is like, yeah, like just a like you couldn't you you didn't find stuff like that on YouTube like in other places, you know. And yeah. so now it's like there's. There's so many mashups all over YouTube now that like it's hard to make one that feels really special or unique. Um, yeah, and I'm not saying that like that one is good because it like had the the fortune of like being one of the first because I I do think it yeah. actually still is really good. Um, oh, thanks. But like yeah. it definitely had a lot of that novelty factor. Um, yeah, for sure. I think like 2016, like the like these mega mix mashups of like having like 50 songs in in the same song right like i think that was like say like in vogue or like much more like like i wouldn't say like um it was like i'd say it was a trend really like a lot of people like did that back then and i think these days like 
people just want to focus on things actually sounding good. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Yeah, like from 2016, I can remember like the remix 10 one. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, there's. I don't remember if it actually made it onto the channel as a rip, but it was like Captain Comedy's like. <laughs> Uh, one of his mega mixes was like really popular on SoundCloud. I think so was that. I, I I don't. I mean, I have no way of knowing which one you're talking about, but I yeah. I think I do, and I think it is on the channel. But anyway, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember like yeah, there was that. There was a thousand year door one I made, which is also mm -hmm. like probably one of my more popular ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually still quite like that one as well. Which one is that? I feel like it. The final battle one. That's what I thought. Okay, thing. yeah. Yep. Probably because, like, some of the sources I felt like I went more out of my way and didn't just include, like, like, I don't know, like, super obvious. Like, bonfire. The stuff everywhere, <laughs> yeah, bonfire. <laughs> Although, I'm trying to remember, is bonfire actually in that? It might okay, be. No, it's not. No? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> like, there, there is some of that in there, but... <laughs> right. But, well, you can't expect me to be completely original. No, probably. go ahead. But, like, <laughs> but, yeah, like... Uh, I, I still kind of like that one, like, I feel like it aged better than a lot of my stuff from that time. Mm. Uh, yeah, like, 2016 Sivo was just a bunch of shit posters in a disc server. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna fuck around a bit in FL Studio, <laughs> in my case, and then just submit. Right. And it'll go up. Yeah. Uh, there's also, like, yeah, at the time, there's also, so I said, like, the channel had, like, an image of mystery. Mm-hmm. And, um... We also did, like, a lot of other stuff that, that wasn't just, like, rips. Right. There was also, like, stuff that people have forgotten by now. Like, we had, like, weird live streams. Yeah. Weird, um, like, we had an ARG, like, the first one. Right. Um, yeah, other stuff like that, which kind of contributed that, I feel. Like, yeah. that sense that Siva Gunner wasn't just, like, I don't know, a bunch of, like, random, <laughs> like, mashup idiots. But I also but like there was like sort of like mystique to this channel. Yeah, but I, I think yeah. like I think that yeah, like uh, the, I mean, I actually I think uh, I didn't I didn't get to see any of the live streams actually live. Oh, good, good. By the, by the yeah, they were not good. By the they time I got good. to the channel, the I, like I think I saw a couple like uh, recordings of them, but um, yeah, for me, you know, as someone who was like watching through the channel, I didn't know like I wasn't on Discord yet, yada yada. Um, yeah. Like, yes, the live streams peeled back the layer of like there are clearly people behind this channel, but it also added a layer of like this is just like completely random. <laughs> like, what? Like, what am I? What am I consuming right now? So I think that like, I think that I think that they, it, it's like a neutral point of like they took a they took a little bit away the mystery, but then it was just it made so little sense that it just completely <laughs> obfuscated all that. I love it. It's, it's great, and I, I wish that like we had a little bit more of that energy now. Yeah, I feel like a lot of 2016 Siva can just be summed up by what am I even like consuming <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah, which is which is yeah. really good. Um, yeah. So how how involved were you in stuff like the the live streams, the first ARG? Uh, so yeah, like I I literally I was the person live streaming, like pretty much. Like, not literally every single live stream made, mm -hmm. but most of them were me. Okay. Although, like, I'd, I'd stream, and then, like, people in, in like, I guess Goons, and then later on when Siva actually started, like, being more of a thing. Right. It's own server. Right. Uh, people would, like, message me being like, hey, stream this. I'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, yeah, that was literally how every single live stream went. <laughs> it was just us streaming random shit that we found funny. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Th that's it. That's, there's not really much more to say about the live streams. <laughs> uh, the ARG, yeah. So the the ARG, like, it was basically just me and Zalable. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I I I thought that that was like all Zalable. I didn't know that you had a hand in that. Uh, so I did like a pretty decent chunk of the first ARG. Mm-hmm. But I think, like, Siva then started going into, like, like I think maybe, like, a year later or later on, like, it had, like, another ARG and stuff like that. Like, I, I had no involvement in that stuff. Right, right. But the very first ARG. Right. Uh, I don't even remember how it started, honestly, or, like, how we had the idea for it. The, the reboot one, right? The reboot one, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think, we didn't intend for it to actually be, like, an all-out ARG. Uh-huh. 
uh, I think we made like a quick like ARG light kind of thing, and then people it seemed like people enjoyed it, so we just made like like in like the course of like a day or two, we tried to like I think it was like a week. I forget. It was a really short time. We tried to like put together like the entire reboot ARG. We were mm-hmm. like, okay, uh, what are we gonna make people do? We're going to make people watch an entire episode of the Nut Shack, right? Uh, <laughs> we're going to we're going to make people watch like I don't know, uh, like just try and find like the funniest ways to present people clues mm-hmm. to like progress. Which I feel like also added on to the what am I even consuming factor. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Which is like, like ARGs will, like a lot more exciting in the sense that you don't really know what you're getting next. Right. And yeah, we, I guess, I think we just tried to like focus on that and how Siva already kind of ties into that. Like the idea you don't know, really know what you're getting next. Mm-hmm. But just like, yeah, be, be like fresh, just throw stuff at people and laugh <laughs> when they're like, why are you making us watch The Nut Shack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah which i think like the inclusion of the nut shack in that arg like after that people started joking about it more and then it became like the meme everybody knows right or I, knew then now that i think about it i guess yeah I, th- I guess that was like kind of before the nut shack really like took off as a yeah. SEMA meme right yeah yeah like there was a ripper that made the nut shack rip way before that mm-hmm. and I don't remember how we started joking about it, but someone made that suggestion. It wasn't me. Um, and I ended up including it. And then, yeah, like, <laughs> more people started joking about it, and then it blew up. And it was, like, the other big meme of 2016, I guess, next to, like, right. Weird Number One. Obviously, like, everybody still remembers Weird Number One because it was actually a good meme as well. <laughs> right, yeah. No, no. <laughs> the nut shack is, like, it's just, like, us making fun of, like... <laughs> <laughs> like an old show that looked like a Newgrounds cartoon. It was just like, yeah. I will say though, um, your rip of um, beloved tomboyish girl that is the what it, what it, what I forget what he's called. It's like the naked guy <laughs> with the yeah 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 doncopter the the uh... doncopter guy <laughs> with the uh, with the nutjack like guy covering his dong um yeah. and then you use like the nut check like sound pitch to the pirates of the caribbean song oh god no yeah. that rip is like still consistently one of my favorite things on the channel just flat out like ever i i have su- happy to hear that. <laughs> i have such a i first of all like i actually stand by that that rip unironically slaps like it's actually a banger um right, and you. i have such a <laughs> Such a visceral memory of um, of during my freshman year of college, I was on a road trip just by myself. I was just driving around the country going to see some friends. Um, mm. And I downloaded a bunch of SIVA rips to my phone to like listen to on the drive. And when yeah. when that one came on shuffle, I remember like rolling down the windows and just turning the <laughs> volume knob like all the way up and just <laughs> flying down the highway to that. Oh man, it's so it's so so good. So that I mean, it slaps and also brings me back to that good memory. So I'm I love that. Rip. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I think like that that was the other thing about 2016 Siva that stood out to me. Like, because back then in 2016, I don't think anybody really expected the channel to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just like some dumb like shit post project thing. Right. Like I said, it had a really cool idea, but like I don't think I expected to actually see it. Like flourish or anything i just thought it would just like die off after like everybody started forgetting about it in like a few months including the people actually like working on it right right <laughs> but like um yeah so like over time it started growing and like when it started blowing up more and more like i got like really excited to see like the ways it leaked into the real world as well uh-huh. like stories about like people who like their friends are like siva fans <laughs> like the, the story you gave just now for example like if that was a story on the subreddit and I was, like, reading it at the time, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd never have expected that kind of thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think, like, yeah. in general, right, like, a lot of people didn't expect that because you guys were planning on ending the whole thing in the September, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, right, and, I mean, uh, I, think, I think there's a conversation, like, to be had about, like, you know, whether or not it, like, was better off that it lived on or like if it should have ended yada 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 but uh yeah but at the very least like you know people can say what they want about that but at the very least i think that 
2016 SIVA still has preserved a lot of its identity. Um, and I, yeah, I think no, I agree with that. Yeah, I think its identity yeah. is different from what it is now. I don't think that what it is now is like bad. It's just different. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, it's just it's it's cool to uh, it, it's cool to like have someone here who I mean I guess I've talked to like Tim and Poets yeah. and Shonic, but like yeah. you, I mean you were you were there like literally from the get go. Um. um... Like almost right. Like there's also so Siva started in like or I guess Giva started in like January mm-hmm. of 2016. Right. I was there at the start of March. Okay. So, but like back then, like in its infancy, it was really only like, like, like it was it had Gangnam Goons like involvement. Like it was like presented in that server and people like right. joined in and submitted random stuff. But it was basically like Chase and like MTH and. Like Dante as well, mm-hmm. making like a majority of the stuff back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like after I joined, after like Zalable joined, after like a bunch of other people joined, like it's like, growing and growing. Right. So like, yeah, like when I say like when you say like there from the get go, it's funny because er- anybody else would be like, dude, this guy was there when like Giva had a thousand subscribers. <laughs> but like, but when I showed up, I was like late to the party. Like, everybody <laughs> else is already there. Everybody else is like <laughs> already making stuff like. They're like, oh, like come subscribe, like. And I was like, yeah, sure, and yeah, yeah. That's a funny perspective because, like, looking back on that, like, so many people joined like after I did, and like, channel just grew and grew and grew, and it, it became like a behemoth I never expected. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it's, it's huge. It was very cool to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I can't imagine like having like been a part of something when it was like in its infancy at like a thousand subscribers and now like yeah being with it i mean you, you're still you i mean you don't make a ton of stuff anymore but you're still like around um yeah and and to like be around and and somewhat involved when like we're at like what over like three fifty thousand subscribers and like hundreds of contributors like it really has it's like evolved into this crazy thing um, it really has yeah. <laughs> um yeah like the reason why i don't i haven't made that much stuff like in the time between 2016 and now Mm -hmm. uh it's not really because like i lost the drive or like um i i don't got fed up with siva or (laughs) you know like any other reason like that right like actually like back then like i was probably one of the people that wanted it to end Mm -hmm. because i was like oh yeah it's had its time like we don't want to stretch it out and make it get like get boring or like um make people like lose the will to submit or like i don't know any other stuff sure and like obviously that hasn't happened so that was wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah like back then that was kind of a sentiment mm-hmm. uh and then like when the channel just kept going and going like i didn't really think like oh i'm just gonna like step away or any of that kind of thing like i'm still like uh very active in say like tiva backroom for example yeah i talk a lot in there um and I have been for years. Um, but like, yeah, so like me not submitting things, it kind of ties into like me feeling like I feel like I have to constantly improve with each rip. Mm-hmm. Which, when you get to a certain point, that's just like not feasible. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, st- I still wanted to anyway. Right. Like, I'd have like a lot of rip ideas be like, oh, this would sound good. Get into Ableton, spend a few hours, go, okay, I'll save that and come back to it come back to it, mm, this sounds terrible, I'm gonna not submit this and delete this and pretend it never existed. And that was, like, <laughs> quite a few of the ideas I had yeah. at that time. Uh, also, just, like, wanting to be ambitious, not wanting to submit, like, something that sounds like it came out in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that self-improvement drive, but also, like, yeah, it's actually just mainly that, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's... <laughs> I didn't really want to, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to like submit cool stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I mean definitely like it's it's good that um it's it's good that like that's the reason and that it's not like you're like sick of the whole thing or like whatever. Um Oh yeah, it's it's that and I also like I'm also sick of the whole thing. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's just that. It's just that. <laughs> um, but yeah. I I definitely like I see uh I mean I'm like looking at your your uh playlist of of rips i I have it here um yeah and like i definitely can uh, see like what you're uh, alluding to with like you know wanting to um 
improve yourself with with each rip um yeah and so so before i i mentioned like the imo the cream of the cream of the crop uh, are there any other rips that like you have a particular attachment to or like some like some story behind that you want to touch upon um not as much as the one like you want to mention. Yeah, that, like that's also the, the favorite ripper that I've made as well. Okay, and also the one that like like had like a story behind or like yeah, yeah would want to talk about for sure. Uh, right. There's a few. Oh yeah. yeah, there's a few that I do like. Okay, but like yeah, like I don't know if they're like anything special or like um or if they particularly stand out. There's like the H H Greg's one, um the Athena Sykes like. Oh yeah, that one's one. so good. Yeah, I really like that one. Still. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't actually know like, you made that one. That's like one of my favorite H.H. Uh, oh. Greg rips. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, I at the time like I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really yeah. it's good. I mean, it's always good when you can make yourself laugh with a uh, with a rip that you made. Yeah. But that one is like it's so good. Thanks. Yeah, there's that one. Uh, there's. So, like, we had a Metal Gear Solid, like, when Siva Gunner, like, actually started. Mm -hmm. So it started because Giva went down and then Siva became a thing. Right. And, like, we made, like, a bunch of Metal Gear Solid rips, like, a Metal Gear Solid album for Siva's, like, like, return, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> like, because with Metal Gear Solid 5, like, back when that was new, like, um, because, like, the whole deal with the main character is, like, oh, he's punished Venom Snake, like, he's back, <laughs> like, that, that kind of thing. And we wanted to have that for Siva. We gave him, like, the same like spike that like punished venom snake and, like, <laughs> that kind of thing right and then we made a bunch of Metal Gear solid rips uh so i had one from then um best is yet to come for Metal Gear solid one uh ending theme okay and like okay it's not like i want to say it's good sounding <laughs> right but like the way it starts is like i really laugh like just like coming up with the idea for that rip and it feels like it was like um, a fan favorite then as well, because it's like so the, the song like it's a pretty like I guess like somber song like it it, it like it comes at the end of Metal Gear Solid One, which doesn't necessarily have like a happy ending. Okay. Yeah. So there's like a minute and a half of like intro, uh, and it's just like building up to when like the actual song starts. <laughs> then the song starts and there's like like pitch shifted like loud Negro. <laughs> <laughs> but like is also really loud <laughs> and pretty much the entire comment section is just like time stamping that bit and freaking out over it because <laughs> you like you also have to like remember like the whole thing about like the channel like just seeming like it was just like normal video game music as well right so there'll be people that click on it that want to listen to it and, like nothing <laughs> abnormal would happen for like two minutes so they would think the actual song was about to start and then yeah that oh man so that became one of the favorites that I, I made from them as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's that, the Athena Sykes one. And then, yeah, like other stuff that I like, but yeah, don't necessarily feel like it's special or anything. Mm -hmm. That uh, yeah. that best is yet to come rip is like, that. that is something that really could have only happened in 2016. Like you, you, <laughs> yeah, you, could, not totally. get, you could not get away with that now because people would know what they're <laughs> clicking on. But the fact that like, <laughs> oh dude that's that is so funny the fact that it plays for that long just totally unchanged yeah. and it just comes in swinging yeah. like that oh man that's fantastic um i do want to ask just because i don't i, I mean I, i've seen every rip on the channel up until like what i think july 2019 um yeah but i'm seeing this one in your playlist i'm guessing i skipped it because of the length but beloved tomboy's girl extended mix is nine hours and nine minutes long yeah. <laughs> is that is that just a blue ball? What is that? Uh so the beloved tomboy girl is from Toho. Everybody yeah. knows this. Yes. It's Chino's theme. <laughs> uh like Chino the character, like she's associated with the number nine. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So that riff is nine hours, nine minutes, and nine seconds long. It actually just... says nine hours, nine minutes and ten seconds. Okay, well, <laughs> Pretend this never happened. Uh, I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, it's meant to be nine hours. Long. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That makes more um, sense. Yeah, so... I mean, it's basically just her her theme. Uh-huh. But, uh... Stretched out. 
not actually for nine hours because like there's 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 a software that does this called pause stretch which just takes music and just stretches it for insanely long amounts of time mm-hmm. and i don't remember like I, like I, I remember using it but i i remember like there, there wasn't an intuitive way to actually get the stretch to be the length i wanted right so i stretched just like four hours or something <laughs> and then just like Dropped it on the end of that again, and like, cross faded <laughs> in, so like people wouldn't really recognize. <laughs> and I just did that until it was nine hours. I say that, but I remember going into the comments, and there was actually someone that was like, "No I'm way. disappointed that this is like three <laughs> hours long." <laughs> I'll, I'll try and find the comment later. But, oh, like, I remember reading that and being like, "We have some very dedicated." Yeah, fans. no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, usually I. Uh... Usually I download the rips being discussed and then I put them in a preview on the on the screen, but I'm not gonna do that with this one because <laughs> yeah. that it's just not it's not worth the hard drive space. But uh, it really is. Links yeah. in the description if you want to go check out uh, beloved Tomboyish Girl extended mix. Um, all right, let's let's do it. Let's let's get into the. Uh, I mean, it the rip. It's beyond words. <laughs> um, so if I mean. If you're listening and and you don't know the rip that we've sort of been uh, like alluding to and and playing around, uh, the rip is Lunatic Eyes Invisible Full Moon from Toho 14.5, Urban Legend in something. I can't see. It's cut off. Limbo. Limbo. Urban Legend in Limbo. Wait. Yes. I think. I think. I think. No, I think you're right. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. (laughs) Right. Okay. Um, Yeah. So. For context, and, and, and Turtle knows this as well, because I've told him probably like 50 times, um, for a really, really long time. It's actually not the case anymore, no offense. Um, but for all a... Taken, all taken, <laughs> <laughs> for, for a really, really, really long time, this was like hands down my favorite rip on the whole channel. And it's still like easily in my top three. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've told you, I, I've sung my praises about this rip to you a million times. Tell me about, mm. like, everything you can about this rip. I, I'd love to hear it. Right, okay. So, at the time, We Are Number One was a thing. And it, it's a great song. Yeah. And it was very much a thing, and I was like, I want to do something with this. And um, the producer, I think his name is Carl, uh, he, he dropped, like, the stems for it. Uh-huh. So the stem is being like each like instrument, the vocals, everything like on, on isolated tracks. So like re- mash up people and people making me to just mess around with it as much as they wanted. Which was like a hugely based move. Like that is absolutely that is like so that, cool. that move. That move. Like if 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 that didn't happen, like we are number one as meme material is a lot more limited. Right. And like there's a lot of stuff that wouldn't have been made about that. Right. Me- meme yeah. culture, as we know it, would be entirely different, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I don't know. It was still pretty big without it. That's so, true. That's like, true. I hesitated. I hesitated from saying like we are number one would not have been a thing if that didn't. Happen. Right. Right. But no, like it w- it would have. But like the stems were dropped because yeah. it was already a thing. But yeah, exactly. The stems well, dropping it allowed it, it really to like helped. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the stems dropped, and I was like, I really want to do something with this. Like, I like the song a lot. I like. I watched Lazy Town quite a bit when I was a kid as well. Oh, really? So, yeah. Like, it actually airs quite a bit uh, in the UK, at least. Okay. Yeah. So, there, there was that attachment to it. There's also just Lazy Town being, like, meme material, like, even before mm-hmm. we were number one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's all of that. So, I was like, okay, I want to, like, find a song to, like, rip um, we are number one with. Uh, and also at the time, because I think this was, like, early 2017. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think it was. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. I'm pretty sure it's February 2017. Right. Uh, I think that rip had like I think I'd been making it for like a April. month. Probably like it's January April. 2017 or something. Yeah. Uh, wh- when was it? Sorry. It, it dropped in April. It came out on the channel in April. April. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably like February or March or something. Mm-hmm. Uh. So I've been a pretty big fan of Toho for a while now. Hmm. But like, at that sort of point. I think I had like exams or something as well, and I was just like, like I literally just like was doing nothing but playing Toho games then. <laughs> <laughs> Which like before that point, like I liked Toho a lot, but I'd only really played like a few of the games and mm-hmm. not much else. Then I was just like, screw it, I'm playing every single Toho game and like beating them all without like continuing <laughs> or anything. Like 
<laughs> I, I was pretty into it. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it happened, like, in my Toho phase, I'd say. Um, and I was just like, yeah, this song, like, Invisible Full Moon, like, Ray Zen's theme from Toho 8, mm-hmm. it, it's a banger. Like, a lot, a lot of Toho themes are bangers, but yeah. like, that one also kind of stands out. It sounds pretty unique. Uh, and, like, there's the... Um, the 14.5 version was pretty new then as well. Uh, Like, the game is, like... I think it's, like, it was kind of old then, but it was, like, DLC or something, and that song got added in. Okay. And, like, yeah, so that song um, was also, like, made by... It was, it's composed by Zune, but the, like, the actual production, the remix and stuff, uh, is made by, like, Cool and Create. The GOAT. Which is, like... Yeah, the goat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, very much, like, in meme culture from, like, Night of Nights. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, like, I heard that, and nobody was really doing anything with it as well. Like, I didn't really... Like, for some reason, like, given the song that it is, it sounds, like, very similar to Night of Nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lunatic Eyes is a very popular song, like, in Toho, but also, like, as a meme. Like, people remember Overdrive from years ago right like, uh a flash that went pretty viral yeah um so yeah like i was like this is like good material to like work with i wanted to like make something with that and because i wanted to make something weird number one i, I like, kind of started thinking like okay like how am i gonna do this uh as, as you might also know like the verses of that song are a different time signature mm-hmm. so i had to like also think okay how am i gonna like how am I going to adapt this? Uh, like, am I going to have to, like, write n- new lyrics? Am I going to... Like, I just went into, like, that kind of thought. Right. And, yeah, it, eventually, like, I got that. I got the stems. Uh, I also realized that, like... So, with the stems at the time, the way a lot of people, like, do Weir Number 1 remixes and things like that is they literally just take the uh, samples, like the saxophone sample, for example, and they chop it up. Yep. And they, like, pitch shift their, like... Like regular, like YTP stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I was like, could I make this sound like more natural? So there was actually like some tweets that the the producer, like Carl, I mentioned before. Uh, he made like a few tweets about like the instruments used in Weird Number One. So I think like I I, I don't know if I can remember it exactly now, but like the saxophone is like a Contact Factory Library one, and the yeah. The accordion is, it's like some pack from Nexus, which is like another, like, BSD. Mm-hmm. That's like an digital instrument kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, like, I got the sax, the accordion, I think there's like one other instrument. But like, yeah, I got them. I messed around with them, and so I was like, okay, this sounds like convincing. Like, we're number one. Uh, and yeah, I just literally played out the song, like, the, the main melody, stuff like that, using, like, those instruments. And I was like, cool, this actually sounds like the real thing. <laughs> so, like, I got that, uh, played that out, I got the samples, I had to mess with the drums because, you know, time signature to change, and right. also, like, certain, like, things that should be, like, accented in the song. Uh, so there was that, there was those instruments, there were the vocals, there was, like, a couple of, like, things I did with the lyrics. Yeah. To, like, make it more appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in the sense that, so, like, it's, it's a Toho rip, um, it's like a rip. It's a theme of um, like character Raisin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like she fights like, like I guess Raymu or Marissa in Toho Eight. And yeah, so like one of the lyrics is like in We Are Number One is like, throw that at him, not me. And I was like, oh okay, well this is Toho, and like every every character is a girl basically. Okay, let's just like change that real quick. Ah, uh, I was always wondering uh, why you did that, but I, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, and there's also like. There's a line which is like, so in We Are Number One, there's like the word like superhero. And I was like, okay, let's like change that slightly to like fit the theme more. Uh, so like Miko in Japanese is a, it's a word meaning like shrine maiden. Okay. But yeah, and that's what Reimu is. Huh. And that's like what Reisen is like going after. So it's like, yeah, I, I edited that to be like super Miko. <laughs> and then, like yeah, I I did like a few of, like a couple of that, those changes. I, did, I don't think I did much, but it was like enough to be noticeable and people pointed it out. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd like go into that as well. Uh, yeah, there was that. Uh, it started off. I realized I also had to like use like vocals from the 
Uh, so there's like vocals that that are in that rip that aren't actually in We Are Number One, which are the the like alternate is, for the alternate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is all like releasing that was also like a Chad move. Yeah, it really was super <laughs> cool. Yeah, like without that, like I would have been confused about like how to like keep the rip going because, like, with how fast the song is, We Are Number One, like I'd have to like start repeating lyrics or something, which. I'd have to like think about right using the alternate um takes and stuff like that meant i could like just keep the song going like yeah and it flows it just, really like, well normal yeah so I-, I was happy with that there was that uh there's like a bit where uh there's like so i mentioned overdrive before the the viral flash mm-hmm. so i'd like drop a quick reference to it like chopped out like um got the vocals from that like the <laughs> the little i guess like chanting or whatever yeah, yeah, but yeah. That, yeah. It's like, that, it's that like really bit. fast in that one bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always wondered what uh, that was. I actually didn't know what that was until just now. Oh, uh, okay, right. Yeah, so, uh, like, 10 years ago or something, like, so Toho, Toho's been, like, uh, pretty, like, in, I guess, meme culture for a while. Right. Uh, like, back in, like, 2006 or seven, I guess, like, people remember, like, McRolled. Uh, which was um, the song UN Owen was her of course like McDonald with McDonald's like like a Japanese McDonald's commercial that yeah like, yeah but that, that was a very iconic video at the time there was that there was Bad Apple there was um, yeah, a bunch of stuff like that and Overdrive was like one of those things Um. so yeah I I decided I'd include like a reference to that as well because mm-hmm. it's, it's also based on the same song so right like, okay this will work and I also needed like something for that little um interlude where I, was, I didn't really want to put any more we are number one vocals in i was gonna like run out <laughs> i start repeating stuff right right i don't know i feel like i feel like i overthink a lot of things but like like anybody else making that rib probably would have been like yeah screw it just like loop the loop this line like repeat that line like, just make it fit. <laughs> but i was just like oh i don't want to repeat this i don't know like right that's a problem that i basically invented and then solved myself but, but like by solving it you made like a better product you know i guess i don't know i think so i think if <laughs> right, like okay. if, if you if you think so it worked then so. <laughs> yeah yeah so there was that uh afterwards there's like a bit with um there's like a robot soundy bit like uh there's like vocoded vocals so like i'd I can't really give you a timestamp off the top of my head or anything, but <laughs> like obviously I'm not that familiar with it. Right, right. But like, yeah, there's like a bit where um, I also like in the original song, like the the original remix. Uh, there are, there's like a voice, like a vocoded voice. Like when I'm saying vocoder, like as, as an explanation, like you guys feel like Daft Punk, like yeah, that kind of music, like. Um, they use like vocoders or I guess like talk boxes, that kind of thing to like process the voice and make it sound robot-y. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm gonna throw a bit of that in there as well. There's like a bit where like um like we are number one is sang, but like in that sort of robot-y vocoded voice. Yeah. I thought it fit very well. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Uh and then after that bit, I was like, okay, how am I actually gonna end this rip? <laughs> Cause I, I'd also like I'd gotten like, I didn't want to just repeat what I did for the first half. Sure. And then just, like, end it normally. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I threw in um, bits of, like, Night of Nights, which is, like, another big, like, Toho song. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows, not just, like, Toho fans. <laughs> and, you know, since since it was, like, the same guy, Cool and Create, and since the songs already sound very similar, I thought I could get away with, like, chopping a bit of Night of Nights into, like, the end of um, Invisible Full Moon. Mm-hmm to try and make it sound seamless and also to try and hide it by using the weird number one instruments like push that along as well yeah and yeah like i remember you saying that you didn't actually realize that was a different song i was like... i was just gonna say like <laughs> you you <laughs> extremely succeeded because the day i found out that like the little night of nights bits weren't actually part of the original song my mind was <laughs> fucking blown because it, it it works so well there like it's a genius idea to put that there um Thanks. and as yeah. someone who like i i wasn't even too like i wasn't too familiar with toho music until i wasn't i didn't even know what toho was until i found siva but 
Um, yeah. Even like watching a bunch of Siva stuff, I only knew Toho music in the context of the channel. Um, now I listen to it a lot more. Like Night of Nights is one of my favorite songs, just like ever. Um, so I would have I would have caught it yeah. if I had known, but like I didn't know, so yeah. I just assumed. And it like, oh man, the that the ending part of that rip, like the whole rip is obviously amazing, but the ending part is just like. Oh, it ends on such a high note and it's just so oh it's so good yeah, i really i really enjoyed doing that bit in particular yeah like, with with like with like two or three key changes like yeah the the haze the uh-huh. <laughs> like, it, it like gets a little faster i think yeah there's also like the the bit from the original remix where they play like the normal invisible full moon melody but they like kind of i don't want to say solo but they embellish a bit towards okay. the very end which i really like yeah and one to like work with yeah uh yeah so overall like i really enjoyed making that it was also probably like the most effort i put into a rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not surprised so I'm, I'm glad to see they got the reception it got like yeah you obviously love it a lot yeah people like it, it seems to have like stayed popular yeah i'm very happy there was at least on the rip that like i put a lot of effort into mm-hmm. i i it's it's yeah. it's pretty rare on this podcast that we spend a lot of time talking about like like a singular rip in particular (laughs) um but like i mean i had i had to do it because i mean just like this rip is i i I it's hard for me to even put into words like how many times i've listened to it how like i mean how many how many sprints i've finished to this song um (laughs) i i just i think it's i think it's absolutely incredible and it's no doubt like one of the best things on the channel um i feel like like anybody who's like uh, listening to this and hasn't like heard the rip before i feel like we just hyped up to this like <laughs> and they're just gonna click on it just gonna be like yeah sounds okay right right <laughs> <laughs> dude no oh okay no like actually one of the one of the most defeating moments i've had just like in my life um was actually in this past december um I was back in my hometown. I was taking a drive with like a an old uh friend of mine and he's he's like a fan of Siva. He doesn't follow the channel actively like at all. Um Right. But anyway, we were going for this drive and um and he was like, "Hey, like show me some of your favorite rips." And so like I told him to like search up some rips and I was like, "Oh, I've got a rip for you to play. It's like one of my favorite rips of all time. Like it's just like one of the best on the channel." And so we looked right. at it, he typed in lunatic eyes and he, he hit play. And he just had like no reaction to it. And I was like, what? I was like, how? He was like, he's like, it sounds good. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I'm like, how can you not be popping off right now, dude? It's like, oh, I just, I felt my heart shatter. I was so upset. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, the, the rip has already like played it, it like quieted down like on the podcast but if if you've never heard it before and that right. was your first time hearing it go close out close this podcast go and listen to it <laughs> put your put your good headphones on and just like go oh man i would punch something while now, you listen now to i it. now i really feel like we've heard it too much. <laughs> i don't think so man i i really i hold that ribbon really high regard um, and also yeah, the the I'm very flat the no BGM version is really cool too. I, I like that you released that on your own channel. Um, yeah, like um, so that's like a thing that a lot of like people who make YTPMVs do, for example. Yeah. And I thought like because I was like listening back to it, and I was like, this actually just sounds like a song even without like the actual song playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> like with a lot of rips, it's like like okay, you have your song, you have the like the modifications you've done to it, and that's it. Like that's the song. Right. But like with Lunatic Eyes, it's almost like a mashup. It's like you have the original song, and then you have like We Are Number One recreated, but it's like with the Lunatic Eyes like melodies and things like that. Right. I think like, it's like a mashup of the two. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I might as well just upload this because you know it's cool. Like I like it when I see other people like upload no BGMs and it sounds really cool about the about the actual song playing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's and I, like I even got like, um, yeah, sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I even got like comments saying like, oh, I like this more than the actual rip mm-hmm. because you can actually like hear the details or like you can hear, like it, it sounds like an actual song on its own, but disregarding like one or two parts where it sounds like a bit empty about the, about the original. Right. 
But yeah, like... Yeah, I don't know, like, I, I thought it was a cool thing to upload. Yeah, I think it speaks volumes to, like, how how well done your, like, arrangement of it was. And then I think, like, right. it, the the rip, like, with the BGM just, like, doubles down on it. Because, it, like you said, like, the, the no BGM is extremely impressive. And then the with the BGM just, like, brings those little, little tiny things that it's missing to the forefront and just, like, creates the yeah. whole, oh, man. It just, I just I get excited even just like I'm, thinking about that riff. <laughs> so good. I'm very happy you like it. This time, so. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for for sharing uh the, the the origin of that rip with uh with me and with us. Um. Yeah. No problem. I know. I I certainly appreciate it. And uh. And yeah. Um. I think. Uh. I mean, we're we're definitely far over the hour mark. But like I said earlier, I don't mm. I don't give a shit anymore. Um, <laughs> but, uh, is there anything else you wanted to, to chat about, touch upon, uh, yada, yada while you're, while you're on? Um, so I guess like stuff I like about Siva that wasn't actually like, that I didn't have involvement in, mm -hmm. Sure. which I realized like, like me talking about myself for like an hour and a half or whatever is pretty, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the, I, that's um, the point of the, yeah. the podcast, but yeah, it is. Yeah. But. Yeah, like, Siva's obviously, like... Well, actually, I was Siva and blah, blah, blah. No, Siva's more than, like, just me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like, I guess, like... I like a lot of Siva. Mm -hmm. Like, even though um, I haven't, like, been as active with it as from, like, 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. Like, I've still kept up with a lot of the big rips since then. Uh, Still, like, there's a lot of, like, newer favorites. Uh, So... In terms of, like, rippers, I, like, I could just name drop people, but really, like, I'd probably forget, like, quite a few names. Like, it would probably be, it would probably be sad, for, like, everybody involved, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but, yeah, like, there's one particular ripper I want to, like, shout out. Sure. Just, like, on this episode. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. You got it. Schnabubula. <laughs> schnab, schnab, schnab. It's like, okay, the ending part is, like, nebula, right? It's, like, eula. Schnabubula. 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 Yeah. See, we've shouted about like 20 times now. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> right, insane ripper. There's like, he's made like, I think, what, like three rips or something? Mm. And all three are like, we don't deserve this. <laughs> like, I feel like. <laughs> Because Siva Gunner, like, over the years, it's kind of gone, like, its image has gone from, like, I don't know, random shit posted 2016 to, like, people actually, like, making music, yeah. but with video game music. Yeah. But, like, Schnabubula, like, to me, is, like, like, he has, there's a, he made, like, a 50 minute long, like, however long the Rite of Spring is, the, the Tchaikovsky, like, ballet. Yeah. And, um, it's literally, like, 50 minute long, like, recreation from like the su like super nintendo sounds like <laughs> stylistically from game to game like for 50 minutes and like there's like obvious like effort and like thought and time went into like every single second of that yeah it's like easily one of the most insane rips on the channel in my opinion which one is that by name so it's called time gate from chrono trigger okay yeah it's like 50 or so minutes long it's it doesn't have that many views. I don't think it's got like 20,000 or something. But like, that rip is crazy. Like, the fact that we have that, the top comment on it is still one of my favorite comments on like any Siva rip. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm trying to remember. It's like, um, this channel mystifies me sometimes. Uh, yeah. Like, you have, uh, it's like, here, here's an hour long rendition of the most iconic ballet in history. Okay, back to off key like Flintstone matchups. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that that rip is absolutely insane. I actually don't recall listening to that one. Um It's pretty long, so, so yeah, I don't I'm, know how many people actually listen to it fully. I'm but... gonna have to go back and check that out per your recommendation. I, I remember the dancing mad one. He also did that, right? Yeah, yeah, that was gonna bring that one uh, mm -hmm. one up as well. So Dancing Mad. Everybody knows Dancing Mad for sure. It's like one of the most iconic video game songs ever. Right. But like, Dancing Mad is like 15 minutes or so if you have like, so it's separated into four parts. And if you like let each part loop once, because the way it plays in game, like each part like loops like 
independently, but it's also one song. Right. So each part like has its own like motifs, melodies, things like that. And the uh, Shinobubula's rip of Dancing Mad, uh, I forget what like what the t- it's like PAL version or something. It's like yeah, like, yeah. Like, I think it's name. I'm looking for it right now. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's uh, it might be NTSC version. Uh, it might be NTSC. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So that rip. Uh, he took each like tier slash section slash part whatever of Dancing Mad, and like changed the melodies around and changed like the song. So it's like tier one plays like tier four's like tier one is tier four if it was like in the arrangement of tier one, mm-hmm. and it's just this absolute mindfuck <laughs> anywhere else. It's like. Like, so much effort was put into it to just not even make it sound, like, jarring or anything. Right. Because Dancing Mad's parts, right, like, like part one is really different to, like, part two, three, and four. Because, mm-hmm. like, two and three are, like, they're quieter, there's, like, organ shit. Like, it, it's literally basically Bach at one point, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, taking that and going, okay, I'm going to make, like, tier one play this bit, but with, like, the instrumentation of tier one. Huh. is insane. Yeah. Like, doing that seamlessly, making it sound like this song is just like an original or something. Like, it's honestly like one of the coolest things I've seen on the channel. Mm-hmm. That and the the Time Gate rip. Like, both of those are insane. The Dancing Mad one is like... I don't, I don't really have words to describe that. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> you, you feel about the Dancing Mad rip the way I feel about the Lunatic Eyes rip. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> it's, oh man, just one of the coolest rips. Yeah, yeah. Like that's me fanboying over that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's as I said before, there's a lot of other rippers I love, a lot of other rips I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like a lot of the rips I love are like ten more towards like 2016, 2017. Mm-hmm. But that's mainly because that's when I was more active. So that's also when I was listening to more stuff. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, like. Steve got a man, what a channel. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what amen to that. What a channel. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean I, I'm I'm obviously, you know, very very passionate about it and very grateful for it because it allows me to uh it, it's given me the opportunity to get to the point where I get to uh to talk to people like you and uh and do this whole thing. I'm flat to that as well, yeah. So uh awesome. I think uh I think that's gonna be uh a good point to call it, if that's cool with you. Yeah, that's completely cool, yeah. All right, awesome. Um, where can... I, I always like to, you know, give the give the guests uh, a moment to shill. Um, where where can people find you right. on, on social media or wherever you want people to find you? Uh, so I'm on YouTube, uh, Turtle Free. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm also on Twitter, uh, Turtle33. Three three. <laughs> As I explained before, right. the... That 2009 Twitter account, that is not me. Uh, <laughs> even though, like, CrossFit seems cool. <laughs> it's not me. Um, so, yeah, it's mainly YouTube. And t- well, I wouldn't say I'm active on YouTube. I still upload from time to time. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, that's my YouTube. Uh, and that's my Twitter. I am active on Twitter, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, break, breaking switches. Breaking switches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm also on Discord. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, should I literally read out like the Discord identifier or whatever? Or I can. I mean, uh, the the links will be in the description, so I can. Uh, right, I can okay. throw that there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's it. All right. Well. Uh, well, as usual, uh, thank you everybody for listening to this episode of the podcast. Uh, you know, appreciate the continued support, and of course, a big thank you to Turtle Three for joining us today. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, of thank course. Thank you for everybody listening as well. It, it was really cool. Uh, I, I can't really say I've talked like, uh, I don't know, like an hour and a half straight about my involvement <laughs> in before. <laughs> so a lot of it was like, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if I came across like to, um, well, I guess like that's the point of the podcast to like, just like chill out and just talk about whatever. But, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, let fucking last week, or not last week, two weeks ago, Sean Patrick and I talked for like 20 minutes about Paper Mario. Like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> it, 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 we have no, we have a very loose structure here. And, uh, but it always turns out to be a good time. So, uh, 
Oh man, why are we ending? I talk for twenty minutes about Paper Mario as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I actually also talked to to Pinky Oats for like fifteen minutes about Paper Mario. So I gotta I gotta dial down I, the I feel... Paper Mario ratio on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much to talk about, man. It's a crazy series. It is. It's very crazy. I'm just <laughs> sad that we spent like how long have we spent talking about Sonic? <laughs> <laughs> too much. Too much time. Too much. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I already said all the all the thank yous and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that'll be it. Uh, and I'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace. Goodbye.